And this episode is sponsored by Connect Team. Click the link in the description below to get started. Welcome back to the workshop. This is part four of working on the dagger from the movie Dune. Plan of action for the day is handle needs a little bit more of a clean up because it's actually got a little bit rusty while it was sitting here in the workshop for the last couple of weeks. And after that, it's going to be on to the blade, grinding it nice and neat and getting bevels in. I want a slightly more efficient means of getting hot glue in place for our hand sanding trick. You know the trick I'm talking about. Last few years I've really enjoyed chucking some hot glue down on my hand sanding blade holder. Then no matter the profile of the blade, it's kind of bedded in there. Usually I've been taking a torch and I just kind of melt the hot glue onto it, but it's kind of messy. And I was wondering if I made a receptacle I could pour the hot glue on and maybe it would be better. So that's why I'm so I'm working on now, somewhat unsuccessfully. Oh, brilliant. Doesn't seem to be much improvement over the original method, to be fair. So they do actually make these things called hot glue guns. And they actually just like shoot out the gun. Yeah, but it doesn't shoot out the volume of it that I need. Wow, that's so good. Oh, Jamie, it's just working so well. God, I'm so glad I invented this technique. God, proudest achievement of my life. We're effectively ready to etch, but what I don't want to do is put the bog oak in the acid and then the coffee. So what I want to do is I want to protect it. And we're going to do that with a little bit of nail polish that hopefully we can get off after the fact. I did a little test piece on this off cut. It worked good. Had to soak it in some of this and then it basically all came out. That's gonna be delicious. Slight problem. I was just getting ready to fill this up with what we we're gonna to use to etch it. This was getting ready with the coffee. Uh, these are about six inches too short. Probably could have done with measuring them early in the day. So I went and bought pipe. Uh. 
You've got to be kidding me. We spent so much time in the shop trying to make sure that we got the right things. I did not get the right cap. Silly Billy. Squish. Squish. So now we've got to talk about acid. Now when I was in Montana the other week, I heard about a new etching product. And this is it. It's called Gator Bits. <laughs> what an interesting name. It doesn't say what it's made of, but I think it's a mixture of some interesting well, acids. It's, it's made of alligator urine, obviously. It says it on the, on the, it says it on the bottle. It also has a logo of a half, half etched. Yeah, and he's drinking his own piss as well. <laughs> <laughs> drinking his own piss. <laughs> Instructions. Degrease. Check. Put the steel in the piss. Watch for streaks. 20 minutes. Let's hope gator piss doesn't melt hot glue, otherwise we are going to have an interesting problem. Quick interruption to tell you about today's sponsor, which is going to be particularly pertinent for the business owners amongst you. Connect Team is a mobile-first employee management app that is created for the deskless workforce. Now, at the peak of our business operations, not all our employees had computers, and so a lot of task management, communication, and clocking on and off was done between a myriad of different apps on their phones. And I really wish that at the time we had Connect Team because it is an all-in-one platform. Your users don't even need an email address, and nor do they need to be tech-savvy. The time clock is incredibly simple to use for users to clock in and out, giving you a clear overview of who's clocked in and where they're clocked in. With their employee scheduling, you can instantly create and share schedules amongst your team members. And one of my favorite things about it are the checklists and forms. Something that's incredibly important is keeping good documentation of things like safety training briefs with employees. So you've got a record of who's been trained on what and what the training involves. Well, it's effortless to create a form like this. And they've got a whole bunch of other templates for all sorts of other forms and checklists you might need. What blows my mind the most is it is completely free to use for up to 10 users. So check them out by clicking the link in the description. But if you have more than 10 users, my link in the description will also get you a free trial with no user limits. So please check them out. Thank you, Connect Team, for sponsoring the video. What does it smell of? I'm not smelling that. Well, I want to smell it. Jamie, don't put your nose near it. I want to know what it smells like. It could be, you, you mustn't like go that close because you might actually injure your lungs. It might smell like Gatorade. Nope. It definitely. looks like it would smell like Gatorade. Nope, definitely it's not Gatorade. It even to. says Gator on it. Yeah, but that's not Gatorade. All right, hope it's not leaking. Is it time to put the blade in? Mm-hmm. How long is it going to go in for? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? 20 minutes. 15 minutes? 20 minutes. 22 minutes. Yeah, yeah, close enough. So what is this going to do for the uh, for the layman? What, this different acid? Well, no, just the acid in general. Well, what it's hopefully going to do is it's going to etch the different alloys that we have in here in a different way. So remember at the beginning of the series, we have 1080 and 15N20. The 15N20 has a higher nickel content, which makes it a little bit more corrosion resistant. The acid doesn't etch it. The acid will eat away the 1080 plain carbon steel, which gives us highs and lows, and also darkens the plain carbon steel as it's etched away. So it just looks like normal steel right now, but this will reveal the pattern. Hopefully. Oh my God. That is awesome. Sweet goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. Look at that. Hopefully this looks even better in about 20 minutes. There goes 20 minutes. Oh, this is the best etch. Ow, I stabbed myself. Ow, ow, ow. This is the best etch that I have ever done in this workshop. We don't even need a coffee etch. Get the water off with some WD-40. Are you just spraying a bit of everything we've got in this workshop on it? Yeah, a little bit of oil now. Oil, water, spray paint, WD-40, we'll mix everything up. Just make a wild concoction. I should add, I was provided the product. I was not paid to say anything about it, but with this tiny little sample size of one, I like it, and I'm going to be using it on future Damascus projects because that is this has proved incredibly efficient and very effective. I'm going to wipe the excess oil off. Then we're going to take some nail polish remover, get this nail polish off, hopefully perfectly. After that, we sharpen the blade and we play some Fruit Ninja.
unfortunately, the only nail polish that we had access to was the metallic gold nail... What did you just do? It was a wasp. Did you kill it? Yeah, and it, really nice. hurt, it really hurt my foot. <laughs> <laughs> you just slapped the ground with your foot. <laughs> anyway, this metallic gold nail polish is stuck in the grain of this wood, and I cannot get it out, which is infuriating. Even trying this, not working. I am going to have an aneurysm. Now, I could sand it, but if I sand it, I risk touching the steel, which would be very bad, because then the lovely etch that we've done will be ruined. I risk doing that with all the options I try, frankly. Even what we've done so far is ruining the etch on the handle. Just the fact that we're working around it, um, it is not looking how it was. So I just spent about an hour getting all of the nail polish off. It finally looks good. Um, the problem is, is that we've accidentally rubbed off all of the lovely etch on the handle, so we have to re-etch the handle. And seeing as it was a nightmare to get gold nail polish off, I'm not gonna be putting nail polish on, which means that we might destroy the wood, or it goes perfect. We'll find out right about now. All right, how do I hold that there perfectly? This has been a really interesting project. As we wrap it up, some of the things that I've learned, it is quite a challenging thing to do this tight cornered fit up on the wood. Because of course, as you saw, we still have that problematic area. I wasn't able to fully fill it up. Turns out I should have just etched it with the wood unprotected first time around, or at least had clear nail polish. These would be fun lessons for the next one. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching us make the Chris knife from the movie Dune. Can't wait to see you soon. Bye-bye.